Portland Open. Kristen Tatar doing what Kristen Tatar does. Returned for the event. I'm assuming she only returned because it was presented by Lad 264. But I'm going to say that without even looking at what she's signed up for and moving forward. No, actually, she's playing the rest of the events. I was wrong. Kristen Tatar back on tour. I think it was quite easy to know that Tatar was going to walk away with this after day one. When you take away... Two terrible OBs, which you know she's not going to do that as often. Yeah. She would have had a two or three stroke lead go on that first day. So like that's part of at least my thought process when I was watching it. I was like, yeah, she's going to walk away with this right after day one. I don't care if it was only a stroke lead. I thought she was going to expand on it, and she did. I think this was a more refined and better Tatar than we saw when she initially left. I know that's kind of a weird thing to say when she's winning before and <laughs> winning now, but I, I think her putt looked a lot better. Basically, what I saw out of the Portland Open on the FPO side was Kristen Tatar playing Kristen Tatar golf. I don't even think it was necessarily her best disc golf. I think she played a very well-rounded game that was able to secure the birdies when they were presented, and even when she found herself in a little bit of trouble, it really was manageable, and that's what Kristen Tatar does. She manages very little bogeys, and she Hosts. She gets the birdies when they're presented, and she puts herself in there for a lot of opportunities. Like we said, we will break down her circle one regulation, 43% and 69% circle two. So she's able to put herself in the circles a lot of the time and converting from circle one and circle two a moderate amount of time. She's going to do exactly what she does and coast to a win. Is it safe to say she's the best straddle putter in the game? You're going to put her over Nate Sexton? Oh, that's a very good point. Solid point, but yes. <laughs> yes, I, I I still think I I still think I, I do. I think that's a little bit bold. I still think I do. All right. The one thing that really impressed me when I was watching Saya Nanda, in my mind, she's here, she's a present, she's going to be competing on a lot of more tournaments moving down the stretch. I think even when we move more towards the east, when we see more trees pop up in the fairways, we're going to be just fine because Saya gets a, does a great job at getting herself down the fairway in circle one and circle two. She does it the best overall in the entire field, 71% of the time on the entire weekend, except I, Sai's biggest problem in my eyes right now is her ability to convert on circle two putts. Last weekend, she didn't hit a single circle two putt, and that was what also her the event over Cap Merch. This weekend, she was 19%, 15th overall in the entire field, but still missing a lot of those birdie opportunities that she puts herself into. Owen Scoggins able to put down a 10 down final round, shooting her up to tied for third place with Juliana Corver showing the M FPO. FP40 hot round and the course record Owen did on the final day. But also, like, this is now her second podium at one of the longest courses on the tour, and she's not as known for her distance off the tee. They keep bringing it up on the commentary if yeah. Owen is getting more distance off the tee. I saw people saying that she can clearly throw 400 feet. I don't know if that's true. I know she's throwing 250 foot sidearm destroyer bombs. Owen's not having a problem off the tee getting to C1 or C2, putting herself there 35% of the time in circle one regulation and 63% of the time in circle two regulation. And the best part about own is she's able to capitalize on those circle two putts, 30% from circle two, second overall in the FPO field. So when she's able to put herself down in the field, unlike Cy, where we were talking about not able to capitalize on these birdie opportunities, own is. Moving over to the MPO side, we're going to break it down from hole 16 on the putting green. Aaron Gossage about 15 feet away for his birdie to stay true to first place, keeping up with Adam Hammes. Unfortunately, the putt spits out. Yes, that was a spit out. That was a spit out. That wasn't De a bad putt. That was No, that, that was, was definitely. That one was a dirty spit out. Bottom half of the pole, lower half. I heard it was to the left, though. Sure. I heard it was Still to the left. Still hit pole. <laughs> like, yeah. But isn't that not the problem? It, hitting pole coming in too hard yeah i don't even think that was like as hard as he normally puts that's what also what was, was like. worse what putt was worse this spit out or ricky wysocki's from last week gibson would be putting out these tweets where it start this situation is like this and last week really make me wonder if a standardization would make more sense on tour absolutely it should if you guys want to legitimize the sport as much as they say they do this is something that's part of that the universal basket system and I'm not talking like on all courses. I am just literally just talking on tour having the same one. Adam Amos able to secure the birdie on hole 16, staying up one stroke, minus 30, going on to hole 17. He takes the box, goes big roller on the 830-foot par 4, smacks a tree pretty early down the fairway, leaving the door open for not only Aaron Gossage, but also Corey Ellis at this point, who's only a stroke down as well. Hanging in there till probably 18, in all honesty. He was right there alongside crowd favorite Aaron Gossage, stepped to the tee after that, 
and went he went roller right no he just went big sidearm yeah. down the middle i think he knew that all he needed was birdie to stay true on this he didn't need to push for eagle because he that would put him out yeah. of contention the but entire time definitely clears the guardians out in the open where you want to be on that drive and was the only one on the card let alone out of the three that were in the race to have an open look to get up and down for birdie while the other twos are hitting that first guardians and at that point leading to the scrambling that needed to be done his upshot too to get up and down for birdie was beautiful, beautiful. after the adversity of that spit out you it could tell that it didn't affect him he yeah, was man, in prime time man that shot put himself inside circle and to step to that putt to hit that for what would be a two-stroke swing also pretty stick, especially after a spit out. Yeah, Hammus puts himself on his approach about 130 feet away. He goes for the long jump putt. And Adam Hammus is known to put in some long jump putts. He hits an early tree that puts him right outside of circle. Right on the edge, like in the classic Adam Hammus body language blow up. Hitting that tree, I don't think anyone, any viewer was thinking that he was going to hit that. Very emotional down the stretch. We saw him sitting down, clearly putting himself out of it. I want to give props to his caddy, Austin Turner, for keeping the momentum. Controlling Adam's emotions to a point where he could still put himself in it. Have somebody in your ear knowing in that moment. I think Adam Hammes definitely needed that through this stretch. Whether it was the highs of getting that stroke lead with two to play or hitting that tree and having to settle from that. Going into the final hole of 18 with the opportunity to win his first Elite Series event. Off the tee, he ripped a power forearm. Something that's been a part of his game, obviously, with his strength, everything he leans towards. Mm -hmm. so Through an absolute bomb, perfect position. Yes. Adam Hammes, now knowing that he has to go for eagle, goes but puts himself in an all right position. It didn't seem too great off the tee, but after looking at where his upshot was, he put himself in pristine position again, going for that roller on the second shot. He just flipped over whatever he was throwing on the roller, putting himself about 60 feet away still for birdie. But even if he would have just put a little bit less turn on it, he would have set himself up great for eagle. Man, that roller actually like came in hot and went like four deep and like rose in the spectators. He's playing to win at that moment is obviously what he's going for. You know you're down another stroke to a Aaron Gossage who's in perfect position. You're running through the amount of motions at that point. That's when he was doing his yoga pose, right? I think he was doing his he's yoga doing pose. He's doing butterfly stretches. Yeah, yeah getting and ready and for like that circle two putt. The roller coaster of emotions that we were able to witness Adam Hammes go through. Highs and lows. And it's going to get to the high because Gossage steps up. What looks like to be an absolute tailor-made hyzer approach. Fully open on the right. You have a tree on your left. And he goes with the forehand up and leaves it short to circle edge. Was he in the circle? He was on the edge either way, one way or another. He was 100% sure. in circle one before that nasty spit out. I yes. think no matter what, I understand he might be upset that he didn't put himself a little bit closer. But being 100% on the round, you got to be happy with it, in my opinion. You can't be mad at a circles one putt. Someone needs to ask Aaron Gossage why he went forehand. And whatever he says, I think it's a valid take. He knows his game better than me. I, I'm just looking at the dissecting of the like well, shot. And layout. it comes down to confidence. Am yeah. I going to throw a shot, a big, you know, backhand hyzer if I feel more confident in throwing my forehand? No. And if this is the biggest shot of my career, damn near, after I just messed it up last week or two weeks or whatever it was ago, it's still fresh in his mind, I'm sure. I'm sure still worlds is at the back of his mind, itching at all <laughs> times, too. Stepping up, you're just going to go with whatever your confidence is. And even after a shot, when he's walking up to it and he's smiling, you see that he can see he was okay with that position. Did not pull the, like, Joel Freeman, slap his thigh, or, like, you know what I mean? He was he walking up like he won. Yes. I, I Well, I believe at that point in time, you have to assume, like, a 60-footer for birdie is, and he probably shouldn't have with the way Adam Hammes was from Circle 2, like you alluded to. I think he had that in lock. I think that he really believed that he could hit that putt if needed, and then also the fact that I don't think he needed that putt in his eyes. Mm -hmm. I think he really could have thought that that was going to be a two-putt win, your classic winner finish, right? Well, Adam Hammes hit it. Adam Hammes. Well, Drilled it. it. Drilled it. Absolutely out his hand. That was going in. Aaron Gossage steps up to circle's edge, needing the putt for now a win. All pressure on his back, on an elevated basket, mind you, and he leaves it short. All I'm saying is if it wasn't an elevated basket, it was going in. Drew Gibson stepped into the forum. That missed putt forces a playoff going back to hole one. Adam Hammes takes the box first, goes massive Anheuser, carrying as much ground as he possibly can, ending up in an all right situation. 
Aaron Gostich then goes power forehand, as he know he always does, leaning towards that, as I would say, is his best overall part of his game. Aaron Gossage leaves it a little bit left towards circle's edge. The only good news that Gossage did have at that point is Hamas was a little obstructed behind some trees, but Hamas, with an absolute pure backhand, was able to find a gap, get through the trees, and get into circle, which ultimately puts a lot of the pressure back on Gossage. Puts all the pressure on all Gossage. All the pressure on Gossage. Gives it lower right, lips out, hits chains, lips out. Now, that's not a spit out, folks. <laughs> no, that, that was uh, a miss, but that's yes. been the story of Aaron Gossage as of late, is the putt has been really leaving him down, even going into the previous rounds, dropping so many circle one putts overall on the weekend, where if, even if he's only capitalized on a few of them, he would have been in a great position. Now, the good thing that he's got for him, I think putting is probably the easiest thing to improve on as far as a pro. He's definitely going to get a win. The dude has all the skill sets. He's got probably one of the top three forehands, if you ask me, and his backhand is very underrated. I think he's going to be up there. Adam Hammes and Kristen Tsar able to take down the Portland Open, but we also had another tournament going on, this one overseas, <laughs> the Estonian Open, where our boy, Paul McBeth was playing. Well, yeah, let's be real. This is the only one reason we're really kind of talking about it, right? Is Paul <laughs> Paul's on his European tour. Yeah. Well, this weird, was his yeah. first stop. The weird thing was I heard that he was the only one like in the field and was only playing, but when I went to Utah, got to keep scrolling down. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly a disappointing finish for Paul. I want to say, what was it? 20... 31st. Oh, Tied for 31st. Averaging less than 1,000 rated overall. When you break down his stats at 37% circle one regulation, 67% circle two regulation, 74% C1X, but the impressive one that he's able to stay alive is his 45% from circle two. So he's able to do something right out there at least. And he could be doing press dockets. He could be doing, you know what I mean? Who knows what's a gauntlet that he's kind of running through out there. I'm going to give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to say it doesn't look good on paper. Doesn't look good saying it out loud either. I'm not worried at all. I'm making the prediction already that he's going to be just fine come European Open. I think he takes that down. I think that he finds his way. This is the first event, and he hasn't playing all the greatest this season, but he's still playing relative to a top 15 disc golfer. So I think that he overall in this, the rest of his European stretch, I'm not worried. I think he's going to be just fine. How is he not the favorite going into European Open with Eagle most likely possibly not playing due to injury? He's got the yeah. last five no, of agree. six or I something agree. like that. Like, I just you know said, I, mean? I think he's going to win. I gave him the favorite. You're going to give him the win? Yeah, yeah I just that's, said he's, I think he's the favorite. That's bold. No. I mean, if you want to talk ish about Paul McBath, some people had memes made about him, and they're, uh, they're getting shared on social media, so I, I don't know what to make of that. Are you alluding to the tour life meme? <laughs> Is that well, what I, that's just where I saw. I don't uh, think they made it, but I think they shared it. And all the reason I saw it was I got it was retweeted by Brody Smith on my timeline. I was like, man, this is this is a little strange. <laughs> I do think it's, yeah, so it's, it's definitely an odd look, especially when you're talking about the tour life um, host being fellow teammates of Paul's. Um, Yuli's the captain. And, yeah, 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 and Yuli being the captain of the team. Um, definitely kind of a weird look. Now, I don't think they created it, but no, 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 no. I, I think that was kind of some media guy. But like you said, well, Bro the joke Brody is retweeted yeah, it. The joke is that the camera guy, man, yes. Joey, I can't remember his last Something name. Something with a T. Yeah, I feel bad. But Joey he, T. He ended up beating Paul McBeth in his place. And there's, there's the joke of how many times has he beat Paul McBeth in his career? Obviously, not a whole lot. But after the. But you're, but you're praying or you're making a joke on Paul McBeth's downfall. I think either way, it's kind of. That's like a, to the standard I would have would see out of PDJ Rodman and give it a laugh. These are also two dudes that aren't tearing up the tour right now. No, that's true. Like Brody just finished in his first top 20 event this season thus far, and that was the last one at Portland Open. Mm -hmm. And, man, I'm sure Yuli doesn't even want me to mention what's going on with his season. Do I think it's, like, a big deal? No. I just think it's a little bit of a bold move, and I think it's a little bit of, like, a poor look. Well, as a content creator, I honestly get it. So, Brody, if you're watching this right now because it's super clickbait, this is the best part about Tour Life, in my opinion. We're getting these takes from actual professionals that create other content that you and me can now talk about. Tour Life is doing a great job in that stance. I'm a fan of it just for this random drama until it gets taken a little bit too far. And I don't think we've gotten there yet. I don't think this has crossed the line. Paul's a big boy. He can eat this one up. And, you know, we might see a little bit of retaliation in the future. Who knows? Paul definitely answers in his own way. And Paul drops 
bombs. If they thought this was going to be a banger, and it really didn't turn into anything. I don't think many people even saw it with what was going on at Portland. You want to know who damn sure saw it? Paul for damn sure saw this, or somebody showed Paul, and I'm sure he saw it, and he's going to wait for his opportunity, and he's going to drop an epic bomb I, that puts the, like, I both you, of their tails. When they, their when they see each other at the European Open and Paul has that championship, there's going to be something set. Yeah. Oh, you mean, like, little, you mean like, the European comment. Open that I think Brody just qualified just now for? Yeah. Like, man, don't throw stones in the glass houses when I've always learned. Yeah. If you liked and enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe. Comment below. Love to hear your guys' opinion on this. Is Paul cooked? I don't know. 